really don't have any basis to make that argument. Now, if we go back to the coin demand, you can see that something really interesting is happening where we go from 30 to 31 to 35 to 42 to 40 to 39, 39, 65, 79, and 101. So a very, very large increase in the coins and metals category. That's obviously the silver stackers who are buying silver eagles and other bullion coins. I just don't buy the argument that a projected economic slowdown has any impact on the price of silver, and I think the numbers bear that out. Now, the other story I want to talk about is a follow-up on yesterday's story, and that is about Apple. I had a lot of criticism about uh, my call that Apple Computer is in a bubble and it's going to crash, and uh, a number of the critics said something to the effect of, yes, you're just looking at the technicals, you're just looking at the price, you're just looking at the parabolic rise, but you're not looking at the fundamentals. So I want to take a moment and look at the fundamentals for Apple. Uh, you can find these if you go to yahoo.com, put in your ticker symbol, and click on the key statistics. You can see the key statistics for every one of these stocks. Now, uh, the first thing you want to note is that Apple Computer's share price is $633 a share. They have roughly a $590 billion market cap. They sell, they have revenues of $127 billion. And they have cash of $30 billion. And they have zero debt. So keep those numbers in mind. 633 127 and 30 billion in debt or in cash. Now let's jump over to Cisco Systems. Uh, this is a company that was one of the last, uh, one of the more recent darlings uh, of the tech community. And you can see on Cisco we have a price of $20 a share. This is a $109 billion company. But this company has $44 billion in revenues. So that's roughly one third. So if we adjust it just for the revenues, that would yield a $60 price if we made equivalent revenues, which are about 120 something for Apple. We have a $60 price on Cisco, which is one tenth the price of Apple. And if you look at the situation for debt, you have Apple had zero debt, Cisco has 16 billion in debt but it has 46 billion in cash so roughly a net 30 billion the same as Apple the next company is Microsoft and Microsoft is about a 264 billion dollar company and they have 72 billion in revenues which is about maybe two-thirds of what Apple has uh, they have 12 billion in debt and they have 50 billion in cash so they have 38 billion net cash which is 8 billion larger than Apple with a price of 31 so if we multiplied to get the revenues the same as Apple uh, we'd have to multiply by a factor of say uh, two-thirds or something like that so we'd have to increase this price to say 50 bucks and so you've got a price of 60 bucks for 120 billion in revenues on Microsoft. You got a price of about uh, 60 bucks for um, the same revenues in Cisco, and you've got a price of 600 bucks for the same revenues in Apple. So I think the fundamentals show you that Apple is indeed in a bubble. It's not a matter of a company that is producing. Uh, profits and returning them to their shareholders. Now the other thing I wanted to point out with Apple, if you go down here and you look at the dividend, you can see that the dividend is not available. Apple does not pay a dividend. So if you remember a lot of the criticisms against gold and silver, uh, people have said, well, there's no return. There's no interest. There's no uh, gain except for capital gains. Well, same thing with Apple. 
Apple does not pay a dividend. Now, Cisco Systems, on the other hand, pays a dividend. The dividend is only 1.3%. The forward is 1.6%, so obviously a lot lower than inflation, but at least they're returning some money to their shareholders. Microsoft is a little bit higher. They have a 2.3% dividend yield forward looking 2.6 percent so both Microsoft and Cisco who have as much or more cash than Apple are returning a dividend while Apple is not returning any so let's go back and look at the charts this is Apple on the max and you can see that this is quite a parabolic looking move if we look back into the history of Cisco systems and look at the max on Cisco Systems. You can see that Cisco Systems also made a tremendous parabolic move and then an enormous crash. Uh, this company has never uh, been an unprofitable company. It's always been one of the most profitable companies in the world. And of course, every router and switch uh, in every country of the world, there's a Cisco router and switch out there. Half the internet is, is built by Cisco so they're not going anywhere but you can still see that they crashed from about 78 77 dollars all the way down to about 10 bucks so an enormous collapse and they never recovered they just flatlined since then same thing with Microsoft if you go and pull up a Microsoft chart you can see that on the long view Microsoft had a tremendous run up and then a collapse. Now it was not as large a collapse as Cisco. You can see that they collapsed from about 60 bucks down to the low of about 15 bucks. So they lost about 75 percent of their value, pretty much flatlined. So parabolic moves are followed by these crashes. There's nothing wrong with either of these companies as I've shown you. They are uh, net uh, to the good of 30 plus billion dollars but uh, they're no longer a growth story. And that's the key issue with Apple. Uh, the reason why Apple has risen so much is because they're betting on growth. Now, my opinion is that if you have a company, again, back to the key statistics, if you have a company that has a market cap of $600 billion, I can just about guarantee you that your growth story is over. There just isn't enough money in the world for this company to continue to grow at the rate that it's grown. Yes, it could go to $1,000, but there's no question in my mind that this stock is going to go down at least 75 and probably 90% before it just flatlines and does exactly what Cisco and Microsoft do. So I stand by my contention that the Apple story is really just a story of people looking to buy it at today's price and sell to someone else at a higher price it's not a stock that returns a dividend it's not a steady investment play for grandma or anyone else this is purely a speculative play and an enormous amount of dollars are rushing into it trying to sell to uh, the highest bidder or the next bidder and of course that's exactly what happened with housing everybody was flipping houses people were buying five six seven and eight houses and they were certain they were gonna flip them to someone else at a higher price that's what you have going on in Apple computer it has nothing whatsoever to do with the fundamentals it's just simply a bunch of printed money rushing into the latest bubble and it will crash and I am going to make sure that I revisit this video in the future when Apple computer is down around hundred and fifty dollars a share so back to the main story and that's going to be silver which is not in a bubble at all it's trying to correct back up above the zero line we've got a long haul for the weekly but we're establishing a very very strong base around 30 bucks and uh, that's a great stacking price but uh, in the future we're going to go much much higher because silver has not even started its parabolic run and we'll talk to you next time